crotch, bring it back. Single leg swings. Let me teach you how to wrestle. Okay. Let me teach you how to wrestle. All right. Hit the and welcome back to Wrestling Mindset. Today we're back with Edmund Ruth, all American. Thanks for joining us. You're welcome. It's a pleasure to be here. Thank you. Yeah, well, a familiar name. Yeah, dude, think about you right away. I'm sure that's the probably the obvious thing. So we'll get that one out of the way. Your your brother Ed Ruth, of course. So um how is that it's now it's just the two of you or you have other siblings too? Uh just well, I have other siblings. I have like an older brother and an older sister, but me and my uh me and Edward are the only ones that wrestle. Okay. All right, excellent. So now we're I guess would he got you involved in the sport at a young age then. Huh? How was how was that growing up? Yeah. No. <laughs> I mean, like it was, it was, it was all our mom. Like our moms yeah. are it's the one that pushed us into it. Like my brother didn't really want to do it at, at the at the start of it, and neither did I. And like I would say, for like the first three years of like me wrestling, I had like probably like the best losing record in like the whole country. Like every single match I would lose, so like, I wouldn't like win anything. Like since the start of like um like my wrestling career. But I mean, like, it's just over time, I kind of just started to like learn and actually decide to think like, oh, I actually want to win these matches now <laughs> and I actually want to like try a little bit more. But from the start, I never really liked wrestling. Same thing for my brother. Sometimes we would try to like skip and get out of practice. I mean, like, I don't know about his techniques, but I know for mine, I would like I would go to the bathroom and stay there as long as pass possible without like trying not to go to practice. Yeah. So what well, I guess what age did you guys both start? Um, I think he, I want to say he started somewhere maybe middle school or maybe, I think it had to be middle school or beginning of high school is when he started. And for me, it was like, like, it was very young for me because like there's a 10 year age gap between me and my brother. So like I started off kind of like when I was in the elementary, like early elementary, maybe first, second grade, but I don't really remember those days at all. Yeah. Yeah. Now. He was a swimmer. Were you a right? He, you were you a swimmer too? No, no, it, it was he, just my brother. Yeah. All right. Now, in uh, in high school, I ran track though. How do you think like that helped you prepare for wrestling, or did you not really look at it as preparation? It was just something else you love to do. It was just something else. I enjoyed that sport because like I didn't have to cut weight, <laughs> so like that was the fun part of it. And also with track, it's also like another one of those individual sports where like. The time that you put in is, you know, is like the time you're going to get out. So you don't really have to rely too much on other people unless you're in like a four by four team. But other than that, it was just like, you know, like if I want to get faster, I had to make myself faster. Right. W which event or what um distance did you run? I did the 400, the four by four, the four by eight and the mile. All right. So, I mean, that, that had to help for wrestling mm -hmm. a lot. Yeah, I mean, like, I always figure I had, like, pretty good distance, well, pretty good, like, uh, stamina. And, like, you know, um, I did the mile only for one year, but I did the the 4x4 four four for, like, uh, all three years I uh, competed in track. And by the senior year, uh, it was – I wish we would have done better, but my senior year, we made it to States. And if we would have, like, ran our fastest time, we would have, like – beaten the school record and became like a state placer in the four by four team. But, you know, like the last couple of days, one of our guys get hurt and we're like, no, we're just like, we're just like kind of just a little bit upset. But then it was like, you know what, we're just going to go out and try it, you know, but halfway through his lab, he started uh, getting hurt and we were like, all right, it's kind of over. And we just finished up running our, um, our own laps. Yeah. No, that's, that, that's awesome. I, and I think that's important too, because it's not, you're not grinding your body down. I mean, you're still probably, you were probably still wrestling at that time too, right? But it's, at least you give your body a, a change of pace a little bit. Mm -hmm. right? Yeah, no, that's. It definitely did help. You know, it just, just, yeah, again, like doing something different and then like um, kind of just not have to worry about weight, but then, you know, it's a different type of training. Absolutely. And l last question about, about with um you and your brother now. So how, talk about mentally, how obviously him being, you know, great and everything, and, and you're great too, of course, but knowing that following in those footsteps, how were you able to, you know, keep yourself level-headed with all that? Is I mean, I'm, yeah. I'm not a big fan of it just because me personally, like, I guess like I put this pressure on myself 
and there's no one else really pushing it. It's just my own thoughts. But to me, it feels like I had to live up to like what my brother had was able to accomplish. You know, he was like able to only lose, I think, like three matches in his whole entire career and then like won like three titles, four time Big Ten champ. And like for me, I feel like I had to like kind of like live up to that potential. And even though like we have like wrestling goals in the in the in the room, and I'm able to like get some takedowns there, but like for me when I go out there and wrestle, I feel like I had to like prove to everyone that like me and my brother are like we're really good wrestlers and stuff like that. And then I feel like I had to like live up to, you know, the kind of like the hype of having the roof as my last name. So now lately, I try to like distance myself from him because I gotta understand that you know, me and him are different people and. And hopefully, you know, try to get other people to understand that we're different people. And the times that he wrestled is like way different from these times, because I would kind of like to say, I mean, a lot of people might have a, a different opinion about it. But I feel like, you know, as wrestling go, like gets older and older, like I feel like it's getting much easier to like for like the top 20 guys to be really good, in my opinion, because I feel like guys 20 years ago, top 25, the top 20 guys are are probably not as good as the top 20 guys of like of this day and age where now like technology is like you can easily search up a guy wrestling learn up like about like oh how does he get taken down what 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 he doesn't like where back then where it was a little bit harder to find all those matches and then really study your opponent so i feel like now it's just it's much easier to study your opponent but then also there's certain techniques that are just being much more like uh spread out easier yeah, no, it's it's crazy how the competition just seems to be getting better and better. Wrestling gets better and better. All aspects, right? Because we have the luxury of learning from the guys from, well, you guys, <laughs> not me, I'm done. <laughs> but you guys having the luxury of learning from the guys in the past. That there's even greater emphasis on the strength, the nutrition, the mindset, um, rest and recovery even. You see, that that's a big deal now, which wasn't even as big of a deal when I was competing like you know, 20 years ago, much less, to, and then 10 years ago, and then now it's just at the next level. So, no, that's awesome. It's true. Talk so talk about um being a Big Ten champ. I mean that, that's awesome. Yeah, I was pretty happy about that. Um, I mean, like, I felt like my uh, road there was, like, a lot different than a lot of other Big Ten champs. But, you know, I talked to my coaches about it, and they said, you know, at the end of the day, whoever steps out on the mat, that's all you can wrestle. You can't really control, like, what goes on. And, I mean, like, I did, like, as I looked at um the people I did have to wrestle against, like, I pretty much beat almost every single guy, but there's only, like, two guys that never wrestled. And um, there's one guy that has beaten me, but then like one guy that I beaten earlier in that tournament, he goes and beats him to get third place. So, you know, like I was sitting there thinking, like, even though like I didn't wrestle, like, yeah, I didn't, where it was supposed to happen doesn't re didn't really happen. And, you know, wrestling different type of people, I'm, I'm still like, if anything, the next best thing of uh, being, uh, you know, the champion of that tournament. The time is now to take your mindset to the next level with Wrestling Mindset. Make sure you go to our website, WrestlingMindset.com, and sign up for your free trial session today. Don't wait any longer. You want the mental edge right now. When you sign up for the free trial session, you're also going to get a copy of our free ebook, Building the Predator Mindset. This book has helped thousands of people build confidence, relax under pressure, get motivated, and build mental toughness in wrestling, school, and life. Make sure you sign up for your free trial session today. Yeah, which is huge, you know, tremendous accomplishment. And then going on to the NCAAs and being an All-American. So talk about how how that, how you felt that went for you. Um, to me, uh, just me personally, uh, I felt like it was a bittersweet because like I'm happy that I'm able to become an All-American, but I felt like I should have done a little bit better. But that's just, just me personal, uh, personal wise. But as I kind of look at it, I'm a little bit I'm just glad of how my season kind of ended where, you know, I was able to like, well, as I look back, you know, there's a couple of tournaments that I won, um, became an All-American, you know, had like a, my losing record was like, it's a lot less than it was like last year. And I was able to end my um, last match on the win. So as I look at it, I kind of had to be like, you know, I had to take, take away some things that I did, you know, well throughout the season. Yeah, definitely. I'd, I'd talk about your coaching staff, how, how they've helped you. Um, I feel like uh, me personally, like getting, uh, what's it called, AC, uh, Austin O'Connor. I call him AC, but 
he's uh he's kind of been a big help throughout my uh, wrestling career for this year even though he's like the new guy like me and him he even though yeah he's also like a lighter guy but still we have like uh we would just roll around we don't really even wrestle live now but we just roll around in different positions and he kind of got me a little bit more comfortable being in weird positions and trying to figure out how to like get out of it and I, his feel is like probably like one of the best feels that I, I had like in throughout like wrestling just because he's more of a loose guy he's not stiff I feel like a lot of wrestlers are pretty stiff and having someone that can just you know can flow a little bit the, like they're not like uh, fighting every single uh, position with strength but they're trying to use more leverage you know that's something that I kind of gravitate a lot more and I feel like that it can improve my wrestling. Oh, definitely. Definitely. It's great having someone awesome like that in the room that you could roll with. And, and now talk about where, what was your wrestling club growing up? Um, so I had a uh, iron Eagle. That's actually where some of the other guys came from. Like my brother, um, what's it called? Somebody that graduated not too long ago. Um, they went to Lehigh, then they traveled. I, I believe they um, transferred to, Wisconsin. Uh, I can't believe I'm forgetting his name, but he was like an 84 pounder yeah. and Chris, w w Chris Wright or something like that. He was a, aren't you guys, there's a couple, uh, a couple other guys too, trying to think of like the big names, but um, I mean, Iron Eagle was uh, a club that I kind of grew up with um, towards my high school year. They kind of like started to phase out. And I think they were done pretty much my junior or senior year. They were completely done. So I still had to like, I was still traveling to like different clubs where I went to um Hershey. Um, they had like their own little like club after practice where my old high school coach, I had him for my first two year, my uh freshman and sophomore year, and then he uh left my uh my high school and then he kind of became the head coach of Hershey for a little bit and then became the head coach of Masai Wrestling D three college. But he was running the club out there with uh Jason Peters. Um, during the basically they my junior and uh senior year, they were running like a little club out there, and I would go out there and train. It was about like a thirty minute drive, and so I would take that after every single, pretty much every single practice of like from um from my high school gym, take it uh, take it there. Yeah, I'll drive from there. Sometimes take a couple of my guys and uh from my um high school room and go out to there, train there. Uh, there's so many other like little practices or little areas I wanted to remember my mom took me to Quinton, Quinton's right. His uh, training uh, club out there, I think like once a week. And there's like a couple other guys. Uh, oh, and also somebody that's been still around, you know, T Namen. Yep. Yeah. I train with them a lot and I still do train with them. Even when I come back home, I always roll around with them. They kind of help me uh, stay in shape uh, throughout like pretty much, a whole college career, whatever I need, like a place to train after either traveling back home or just being at home. Awesome. And, and how did, how did Pennsylvania growing up there have an impact on your wrestling? Obviously, you know, top state in the country for wrestling. So how, how did that help prepare you? Just gave me more confidence just to realize, like, I come from like the, one of the toughest wrestling states in the whole country. So I know like, all right, if I wrestle a guy from like, <laughs> not trying to say anything mean, but like a Utah Utah guy, but I'm thinking like, oh, okay, I should be able to be on you know, a PA guy. And it's funny, like not not even thinking about like, oh, like I train, or I put this many hours. I just think like, oh, I'm a PA guy, so I should be able to beat like in the other states. So it just kind of gave me like like a lot of confidence and pretty proud of where I like started my wrestling career because it is pretty hard there. And it's funny, I hear like a couple of my other guys, they will say, oh, I remember my wrestler PA guy, and they got on top and. I ain't never got up. <laughs> so it was kind of like, like, it's kind of funny how they, uh, how other states see a, uh, PA guys like us. So it just kind of gives me a lot of confidence and pretty proud of where I started with my wrestling career. Absolutely. And we talk a lot about mindset. How has your mindset developed over time or what are some of the things you, you might've done to improve your mindset? Um, I mean, for a long time, I think it started in elementary or mainly in high school. I think the one thing that kind of like helped me as a wrestler is to realize like, like if I don't like losing the best way to fix a loss, is just to learn from your mistakes. So I always sit there and like, after the match I lost, I'll sit there and think like, why did I lose that match? 
like what happened oh i gave up a takedown because you know he shot to my leg what was i doing oh i wasn't defending so i try to like go back to the wrestling room and fix on those like areas on weekend and that's like the biggest thing that really helped me throughout my college career and i still like even do it now where i always try to learn from my losses and start all the way back from middle school to early high school i just I mean, nobody likes winning. Oh, well, no, sorry. No one likes uh, losing. But for me, I kind of like take a little bit more personal, even to the point where I don't like giving up takedowns. So if a guy gets a takedown, then I sometimes rewatch the match and figure out how to get that and trying to make sure that doesn't happen again. Just, you know, ch being more of a stickler and then learning from even like areas that I lose and correcting that. Yeah, and like there's there's that whole debate of do we do we love to win more? Do we hate to lose more? Which is tough because it's like, a, you know, a lot of the best guys, it's they hate to lose more. Mm -hmm. No, yeah, I think the the losing part is just, Yeah. um, yeah, it has to be the losing part for me. Even though, like, like if I if I have that tie, I'd rather have a tie than just lose, because in there, it's just I guess it's like a kind of like a a man's way of like saying like, no, I am bigger, I am stronger, <laughs>